The shoulder is the most mobile joint in the human body. It can flex, extend, abduct, adduct, internally and externally rotate, protract, retract, and fully circumduct. When the muscles, ligaments, and tendons weaken, such as after stroke, or are lax as in Ehlers-Danlos and hypermobility syndromes, the arm slips down in the socket. That's called shoulder subluxation. It's like a partial dislocation. Today, we'll cover four exercises for shoulder subluxation prevention, plus essential safety tips every caregiver and patient should know. This is an educational video that will show you the proper technique for doing the exercises. If you want to follow a long video, leave comments below and we'll make one. Now over to Oksana, our new trainer, who will show you how to do the exercises. Thank you, Doctor Moving Better. I'm excited to join Rehab Lab. These exercises target shoulder stability, scapular control, rotator cuff activation, and deltoid support. We'll keep it safe. This should feel like effort and pressure, not pain. Stop immediately if you feel pain, pins and needles, or a slipping sensation. Remember to warm up before exercising. And when doing these exercises, remember to gently squeeze your glutes together and gently tuck your belly button, so you hold steady during the exercise. Thank you, Oksana. You're right. Make sure to warm up before exercising. It's easier and safer to exercise warm joints and tendons than stiff ones. Gently keeping your glutes squeezed and belly button gently sucked in a little during the exercise stabilizes your core. The first exercise is scapular setting with wall slide. You'll feel this exercise a bit in your anterior deltoid, but the main targets of this exercise are the serratus anterior and lower trapezius. These muscles tilt and rotate the scapula upwards so the arm aligns properly, improving shoulder stability. In addition, this exercise combination is helpful in preventing shoulder injuries, improving proper posture, and overall shoulder function during overhead movements if you're able to do them. In stroke, these muscles are often inactive or weak, so when you do this, focus on activating these muscles. In Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, they underperform because the tendons are lax, so feel the glide and strength of the muscles as you perform the exercises. Let's get back to Oksana, who will guide you. To set up wall slides, stand tall facing a wall. Place your forearms on the wall so that your palms are facing each other, elbows just below your chest. Hands around shoulder level. Gently squeeze your glutes together and tuck your belly button in to hold your core steady. Now gently set your shoulder blades down and around. Ready to start? Slide your forearms up just a few inches in a slight Y shape. But don't let your elbows go higher than shoulder level. Exhale on effort. Then lower slowly and repeat. Do two sets of 6 to 10 reps. Remember, no shrugging your shoulders. The only part of you that moves during this exercise are your arms. No arching your lower back and don't jut your head forward. Keep it neutral. Next up, wall push-up plus to train the serratus anterior. The main muscle we are trying to work here is the serratus anterior with some help from the lower trapezius. You're not pushing with your chest. You are using your shoulder blades. The serratus anterior drives scapular protraction and upward rotation, which helps the rotator cuff and deltoid keep the shoulder centered during elevation. This exercise provides a low impact way to build strength for beginners or those recovering from injury. For stroke patients, focus on the smooth motion. For EDS, avoid the end range lockout. Set up by standing facing a wall. Hands flat against the wall at chest level, 
Shoulder width apart, elbows soft, not locked. Wrists, elbows, and shoulders should be aligned, so don't flare your elbows out. Now, with your hands pressed against the wall, slightly rotate them outward so your elbows are a bit more inward. Step back one to three steps so there's a mild lean. Gently squeeze your glutes together and tuck your belly button in to hold your core steady. This exercise moves your shoulder blades. Don't move your elbows. Keep your elbows straight with a slight bend so they don't lock out. Start by inhaling in through your nose and push against the wall exhaling out through your mouth. Focus on your shoulder blades as you push the wall away. You'll feel your upper back arch forward as you get to the end of the push. That's fine, but keep the rest of your body steady. Don't jut your head forward. Avoid shrugging your shoulders up. No flaring your elbows out. Finally, don't curl your lower back. Do 8 to 12 repetitions for two sets. Good job. Next is side lying shoulder abduction. This move strengthens the supraspinatus and mid deltoid, two key muscles that stabilize the shoulder and reduce the risk of subluxation. When done correctly, it builds strength without stressing fragile joints. We'll do this lying on your side instead of standing up to reduce the risk of injury by minimizing strain on the shoulder and back from gravity. First step, lie on your non-working side. Place a pillow under your head, bend your knees slightly and keep your spine straight. Make sure your ribs, sternum and pelvis are stacked so you don't roll backward. Step two, rest your top arm along your thigh. Turn your thumb slightly so it points in the direction of the ceiling. Keep a gentle bend in your elbow, never lock it. Set your shoulder by relaxing it down your back and letting the shoulder blade wrap slightly backward, not pinched. Keep the shoulder blade down and back during the exercise. And remember to gently squeeze your glutes and gently tuck your belly button in to stabilize your core. Step three from this position, slowly lift your arm up, keeping it slightly behind you, about 20 to 30 degrees up in an arc-like manner. Keep your thumb angled slightly upward toward the ceiling. Exhale as you lift. Keep your shoulder down and away from your ear. Pause for a second at the top, then lower your arm slowly. Do 10 to 15 repetitions for two to three sets. Focus on smooth, controlled movements, not speed. Excellent. Now on to the final exercise. Side lying external rotation. This exercise targets the rotator cuff, especially the infraspinatus and teres minor. These are the small but critical muscles that keep the ball of your shoulder centered in the socket. We'll do this exercise lying on your side to minimize the pull of gravity, so the movement starts easy and gradually gets harder as you lift. That way, the muscle is challenged safely without joint shear. Lying down also stabilizes your trunk, so you can't cheat with your body. The rotator cuff has to do the work. The first step inside lying external rotation is to lie on your non-working side with a pillow under your head. Bend your knees slightly, keep your spine neutral, and stack your ribs and pelvis so you don't roll backward. The only body part moving is your arm, everything else stays solid. Next, place a small towel roll between your elbow and your side. Rest your top arm so the elbow is bent at 90 degrees, tucked at your side, and the hand facing the floor. Keep the wrist straight and lightly squeeze the towel with your elbow. Gently squeeze your glutes together and tuck your belly button in a little to hold your core steady. Now you're ready to start. Take in a deep breath through your nose. As you exhale through your mouth, slowly rotate your forearm upward in an arc, like you're opening a book. 
Keep your elbow glued to your side. The towel should never slip. Only lift to a comfortable point, usually about halfway up. Pause briefly at the top. As you inhale, lower your arm back down slowly over three to four seconds. Keep your neck relaxed, shoulder down and avoid shrugging. Repeat. Do 10 to 15 repetitions for two to three sets. And remember to move slow, stay controlled and focus on quality over quantity. Good job. You've learned it for exercises to stabilize the shoulder. Now let's go over safety and tips. External rotation is one of the safest and most effective ways to protect an unstable shoulder. By strengthening the rotator cuff, the infraspinatus and teres minor, we help the ball of the shoulder stay centered in the socket, reducing the risk of it slipping out. That's why we practice controlled external rotation in safe, mid-range positions, like side lying with the elbow tucked. But here's the key, while controlled external rotation builds stability, overhead or copped back external rotation is exactly where the shoulder is weakest. In those end range positions, the humeral head naturally wants to glide forward and without strong support, subluxation is more likely. So the strategy is simple. Avoid extreme overhead and copped back ranges early on and instead train external rotation safely at the side. That way, you build the stabilizers in the positions where they can succeed and over time, give your shoulder the strength and control it needs to stay secure. You might be wondering when you can expect results. First, to get good results, you need consistency. Start with two sessions per week. Be consistent and you can expect results in four to six weeks, or maybe sooner. You'll feel more control of your shoulder and less slipping. Your shoulder is learning to trust itself again and you're the teacher. When your form is perfect and the exercises are smooth and easy, you can progress. First do more repetitions. Just one extra per exercise per workout session is enough. Keep adding on repetitions until you reach the rep max, then you can increase to doing three sets per exercise. When you manage that, advance to doing this exercise three times per week. Each level makes you stronger and more capable. Keep in mind, this video is educational only, not medical advice. Please check with your physician, PT or OT, especially if you've had a stroke, hypermobility, surgery, or new symptoms before starting these exercises. Thank you, Oksana. Let's wrap this up. See the description for a downloadable tracking sheet. Tracking your exercise progress is very helpful. What gets measured gets better. It shows you if the shoulder is getting stronger, helps spot early warning signs of fatigue or instability, and keeps you motivated by making improvements visible. If you're interested in a guided follow-along routine or there are certain topics you want covered, leave in comments below. Subscribe for more science-based recovery tools